Alright. Fine. Good morning. Good morning. Officially, good morning. Um, good to have everybody back, all you saved people who were here when you should be in last week. <laughs> and the fleshly people, it's good to have you back. Alright, so this morning, I felt like I wanted to deal with something that I had a question on. A lady had sent me a message in uh, Messenger, and it kind of pertained to God's wrath and the rapture and some things like that. And wanted some verses to, to support why it is that we teach that the body of Christ doesn't go into tribulation and all that kind of stuff. And for us, all that stuff is simple, but for other people who are coming to the truth, it's not that simple, and they've got so many people around them telling them so many things about the events because most people lump everybody into prophecy, right? They look out the window, prophecy facilities fulfilling itself you know, day by day. You look at it, you know, all these things are happening. There's prophecy being fulfilled. And they have no clue uh, how the Bible is structured. Uh, I have a young man that uh, made a profession of faith a while back, and I asked him about the gospel, shared the gospel with him. Yeah, that's what I believe. Been knowing the guy since he was a child, a baby. And so I didn't throw right division on him. I, I gave him the gospel, right? Because he's not going to be able to comprehend what it is that we've comprehended on time. Well, he came to me this past week, and he asked me a question. And I was able to lay out the structure of the Bible to him. And his eyeballs got really big. I was like, yeah, that's the way the Bible is laid out for you. It's laid out this way. The Old Testament, your Gospels, prophesying of the kingdom. Then Acts bridges us over to Romans. And Romans to Philemon, there's where you're going to find who you are and where you are. So hopefully he'll take and do what we did at some point and maybe study that. <coughs> so we're going to deal with this. Uh, I want you to uh, understand some terminology this morning. Um, one, I, I would title this Saved from Wrath. All right, Saved from Wrath. So it's going to be important that you, that you understand that. That sounds simple, doesn't it? So, Saved from Wrath. That's God's aim. Yep. What time are you living in? Not that right. Grace. 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 Grace, right? Yeah. Grace and peace, right, the Apostle Paul. Yeah. All right, if you would go over to the book of Exodus with me this morning, and I'm going to take the Old Testament passages, and we're going to build up to our doctrine in the book of Romans and so forth about wrath. I don't have the time uh, to drill down into this like really, really hard, but what I can do, I can show the verses, and what you should be willing to do is go back and study the verses. Connected verses and so forth and so on. So over in Exodus in chapter 32, we'll begin reading there at verse 7. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go get thee down, for thy people, which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I have commanded them. They have made a molten calf and have worshipped it and have sacrificed thereunto and said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Remember Acts chapter 7, along about verse 53. Exactly what the Holy Ghost recited through Stephen about this people. Now therefore let me alone that my wrath may wax hot against them, that I may consume them, and I will make of thee a great nation. And Moses besought the Lord his God and said, Lord, why doth thy wrath wax hot against thy people, which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Wherefore 
should the Egyptians speak and say, for mischief did he bring them out to slay them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from thy fierce wrath and repent of this evil against thy people. Well, that's, that's strong. Yeah. Moses, said, Moses said to the Lord, Repent, yeah. repent Lord. Yeah. Well, we, we know repent means to turn from sin. There's a definition of repent. Change your mind, Lord, about this evil. That's repenting. Remember Abraham. See, Moses takes God back to the promise. Yeah. 430 years before the law, he takes him back to the promise. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and who? Israel. Jacob. No. Yeah. Israel. He realized that. He's saying Jacob right there. Oh. Right? So, <coughs> save from wrath back here. When he uses Israel right there, you can plug Jacob in there as well, right? Right. So Israel, that's going to be important for you to realize when he talks about Israel here. <coughs> Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, the servants to whom thou swearest by thine own self, and saith unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have spoken of will I give unto your seed, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. Yeah. Right? So what was the promise to Abraham? Yeah. The promise to Abraham was that God was going to give them some land. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And Moses takes God back. He takes the Lord back and said, remember Abraham? Yeah. Remember Isaac? Yeah. Remember Israel? Before Israel gets out joint with God and then they are known as Jacob. Right? There's a reason it's a time of Jacob's trouble. Mm -hmm. Right? So maybe the board up here should look a little different than this. So save from wrath. And I want to show you something in the scripture this morning. <coughs> and when you don't write to the Bible, the word of truth, you can build fear in people. Yeah. You can build questioning in yeah. people, doubting people. They'll doubt their salvation. They'll doubt where they're going. They'll doubt when they're going. But the Bible just makes it clear as a bell, if you'll just stick with it, what's going on in the Word of God for you and for Israel. Right? And so here, there's a time that's going to come up on the earth, and it is known as Jacob's trouble, Israel's trouble, if you will. You can do either or, but it's really Jacob's trouble. And so if you will, go to Deuteronomy, the second given of the law, if you will. And when you get there, go to chapter 9. So I want to paint the picture because what gets questioned is why? Why is there seven years of tribulation? Why is there a time on earth known as tribulation and great tribulation? That's the question, right? And so what people do who don't write to the Bible, and some even who claim to be right to the Bible, they think the body of Christ here like this, I shouldn't have got that board wet, and they put us over into the time of Jacob's trouble. Right? And you shouldn't do that because that's not what God's doing. That's not God's plan for you, and that's not God's plan for His body. So look here at chapter 9 of Deuteronomy. When you get there, look at verse, uh, verse 7. So actually look at verse 6. Understand, therefore, that the Lord thy God giveth thee not this good land to possess it for thy righteousness, for thou art a stiff-necked people. Deuteronomy 9, chapter 6, or verse 6. Look at 7. Remember and forget not how thou provokest the Lord thy God to what? Right. To wrath right. in the wilderness for the day that thou didst part out of the land of Egypt until you came unto this place. You have been rebellious against the Lord. See it? So there's a nation here that God called out of Egypt. He said it was his firstborn son, Israel, <coughs> and they had become rebellious, provoking God unto wrath. Right? Yeah. All right. Now we know that God set that nation aside so that he could deal with the world yeah. as one and put them into one body, not into a nation. Right? right? So look here. Look at 2 Kings. 
Just try to lay the groundwork for what we're going to work our way up to here. That shouldn't take long. 2 Kings, when you get there, go to chapter 22. So what you're learning is the reasoning for the time of Jacob's trouble. 2 Kings 22. When you get there, look at verse 16. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil upon this place, and upon the inhabitants thereof, even the words of this book which the king of Judah hath read. Because they have forsaken me, and have burned incense unto other gods, that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands, therefore my wrath, see it, mm -hmm. shall be kindled against this place, and shall not be quenched. So what's the difference in wrath, the opposite is what? Peace. Yes. God's anger, God's peace. Watch what he says here to the believer going forth. <laughs> but to the king of Judah, which sent you to inquire of the Lord, thus shall ye say to him, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, as touching the words which thou hast heard, because thine heart was tender, and thou hast humbled thyself before the Lord, when thou heardest what I spake against this place, and against the inhabitants thereof, that they should be. Uh, become a desolation and a curse and has rent thy clothes and wept before me I also have heard thee said the Lord <coughs> behold therefore I will gather thee unto the fathers and thou shalt be gathered into thy grave in peace see that and thine eyes shall not see all the evil which I will bring up on this place and they brought the king word again so he shows they are the ones who humble themselves the ones who faith believe that they shall not see the terrible things that the Lord's going to do in that particular time, in that particular place, the book that was given unto the king. Now we look up at Jeremiah. Jeremiah. A little bit of speed dial just to catch up a little bit. So I've got, I've got way more to share, but we can't do it. So we're just going to go about it this way. Um, I had this all written down this morning when I got here to the assembly I pulled up Facebook and Brother Sam Gerhardt had posted his verse for today trouble it was called and the exact passages that we're getting ready to read is what I read from Brother Sam's uh, post this morning in Jeremiah 30 in verse 1 the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying thus speaketh the Lord God of Israel saying Write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. For the love, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, saith the Lord, I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. And these are the words that the Lord spake concerning Israel and concerning Judah. For thus saith the Lord, we have heard a voice trembling of fear and not of peace. See that? Mm -hmm. So there's some wrath. Mm -hmm. Now look at verse 6. Ask ye now and see whether a man doth travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail and all faces are turned into pelvis. I picture that every time I think of that verse, the anguish and the, and the pain and the tribulation and great tribulation on the earth at this time, you can, the Bible says that men will be as if women were having a child for the anguish and the pain. Never had one, right? Don't know what it's like. Glad I can't, right? They're trying to figure that out as we speak. But, I mean, think about it. You can picture that a man in so much pain because of the trouble that is up on earth. Are you seeing that today? No, you're not. You know why? Because God has made himself at peace with the world through the cross of Jesus Christ. Right now, you live in a time of grace and peace. You know what the ungodly world, you know, they're living in the same time of God's grace and peace. Yeah. He's not zapping them. No. He's not killing them for it. Right now, he's given space that they could hear the gospel, believe it, and be justified by faith. So God is not pouring out his wrath. 
that. Look at verse 7. A loss for that day <coughs> is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of what? Jacob. Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved what? All right. I told you when we started that we would be saved what? From it. Right? We'll be saved from it. Over here he says saved out of it. That's different. Isn't it? There's a group of people back here that are going to be saved from God's wrath. There's a group of people over here they're going to be saved out of it. Right? They're going to be in it. Yeah. They're going to go into it. And they're going to be saved out of it. So very important that you understand that. You understand that it is a terrible, terrible time upon the earth. Go back to Isaiah. Isaiah and chapter 13. Remember in Romans 11, I think it's somewhere around uh, verse 28. He said, for the gifts and the calling of God come without repentance. Just before that, he said, so all of Israel shall be saved. Well, God promised them a future salvation that he put in a covenant for them. But God also promised them a time of Jacob's trouble. Right? And they're going to have to go through the time of Jacob's trouble to get to that covenant over here in which God will then blot out their sins and remember them no more. Right? They've got to go through that time. They've got to endure to the end. The ones who go through this unto the end, the same shall be saved. They believe <coughs> on the Lord Jesus Christ as the Christ, as the Messiah, as the returning King, to sit upon the throne of the Father David there. Then they will receive the blessing of the new covenant in which he will forgive them all their sin. He put it in a covenant for them. You have no such covenant. Your sins were taken care of by grace on the cross of Christ. He put it away for you there. You've now received the atonement. You've been justified freely and just as if you had never sinned. Amen? So we already have received that day of atonement. For us, the atonement was when Christ went to the cross. For them, the day of atonement is painted in those feast days back there throughout the Old Testament coming up to the New Covenant. That's when they will have that day of atonement there for God to blot out their iniquity. Look here in chapter 13. Chapter 13 of Isaiah. When you get there, let's look at verse 6. How ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand, it shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt, and they shall be afraid, pains, and sorrow shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travails. See it again. They shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be as flames. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened and is going forth and the moon shall not cause her light to shine and I will punish the world. What's God not doing today? He's not punishing the world, is He? Right? For their evil and the wicked for their iniquity and I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. I will make a man more precious than fine gold. See that? Yeah. What does that mean? Yeah. That's how hard the population will be cut yeah. to where man will be. So hard to find, unlike now where they're on top of each other because the population of the world has grown enormous. He said, I will make them as fine as gold. You don't find gold every day, do you? Yeah. Even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Therefore I will shake the heavens and the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts and in the days of his fierce anger. Thank God for the dispensation of the grace of man. Right? Amen. Because the day of the Lord is mighty and nothing is like it. People can mock, yeah. wag their heads, point their fingers, yeah. do as they please, but I'm telling you now, where we 
them in grace and peace, wrath is on the way. I, I can tell you that assuredly upon the Word of God. Go up to the book of Daniel. The book of Daniel. When you get there, stop in at chapter 9. So we're going to paint this picture and move forward and, and get the rest of the teaching done. I think I've gone speed dial long enough I can slow down a bit. I got 20 minutes into this thing. We're good. <clears throat> Chapter 9, verse 24 of Daniel. 9 and 24. 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and thy holy city to finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, and to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Right? Mm -hmm. So, 70 weeks, 70 weeks. Back at the cross, Jesus was cut off, the Messiah was cut off for the sins of the people, not for him. Alright? We believe 69 weeks have been accomplished. We believe that there's one more week of years to go. And if you take a week, how many days are in a week? Seven. So how many seven. years do we have? Seven. seven years. There ain't no such thing as seven year tribulation, they say. Just do a little math, right? Get your calculator or get somebody to help you to do some math right there. Seventy weeks are determined upon my people, upon thy people. Thy people, Jacob, thy people, Israel, right? Mm -hmm. This has absolutely, the tribulation and great tribulation has absolutely nothing to do with the church, the body of Christ. And then when you say that, they say, well, you just believe in easy escapism. Mm -hmm. No, what it's called is being called away. Yeah. That's what it's called. So the church, the body of Christ, will be saved from that wrath to come. Why? Because the Lord Himself will ascend from heaven, and He will call this body of Christ up to Him. And then after the body of Christ is called up to Him, then shortly after that, He'll resume prophecy and deal with Israel throughout the time of Jacob's trouble, the seven years. And we've got no doubt what happens after the seven years of tribulation. Because Jesus told us in the red letters, immediately after these days shall he come back. Yep. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right, see that? Mm -hmm. All right, now look up here at Matthew. Mm -hmm. Men are teaching today to the church of the body of Christ, right dividers, they call themselves, yep. that somehow they go to 2 Thessalonians, they get all tied up over there. The day of the Lord, the day of Christ, and all this stuff. They get all mixed up that somehow God is going to let the body of Christ go, go through half of the seven weeks. That's fallacy. Yeah. The body of Christ is a mystery hidden God. It has no point on earth. We're ambassadors for Christ. And before the war breaks out, He's taking the ambassadors out. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. That's what's going to happen according to the book. Yeah. All right, look here at Matthew. When you get there, look at chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3. So it's clear that all the way back to Moses that God spoke about a time when he was going to put wrath upon the earth. It comes through the, the major prophets. It comes through the minor prophets. They're speaking of this time that's going to come up on the earth. A time known in Jeremiah 37 as a time of Jacob's trouble. The wrath of God is going to be revealed from heaven. Right? Now we know today, hopefully you know today, that God is not showing His wrath. No, he's not. God is showing, and you think about this, think about God's grace, that as wicked as this world is, He's showing grace and peace yeah. toward the world yeah. that they might be saved and come to the knowledge of That's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. You know why God can do that? Because He made peace right here with the cross of Jesus Christ, right? He charged Him with our sin so that He wouldn't have to charge the world with our sin. And this thing has an expiration date. Yes, the church, the body of Christ, when it fills up, however God deems that to work, when the last person goes in it, whatever the case may be, when that body is completed, He's taking it out of here. Amen. And we know it as the rapture. Argue with it all you want, but that's God. He's going to catch that body up and take it to glory. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And it's not going to be here for Jacob's trouble. No, it's not. You know what we have in common with Israel? Nothing other than right now both 
Gentile and Jew can be placed into one body by Paul's gospel. And you know what? In that body, you're neither one. You're not Jew. You're not Gentile. You're not male. You're not female. You're not bond. You're not free. We are all one in that body. There's not a nation in that body. There's not 12 tribes in that body. You may notice, as you drive in the parking lot over here, we have set up a garden and a greenhouse so that we can raise our tithes for the Levitical priesthood out here. We can give them some plant food and we can share with them a 10% of what we build. Right? It's beautiful out there. You see it? What in the world are they? So what I want you to understand, the body of Christ does not go in to tribulation. We're saved from that wrath. Look here in Matthew chapter 3. Speaking of John the Baptist in verse 7. 3 and 7. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers. That's nice and friendly, John. Let's go down to the prayer meeting where we're baptizing. Hey, a generation of vipers. Yeah. Y'all be nice about it. Let's get on John a little bit. O generation of vipers, who have warned you to flee from what? Right. The wrath to come. And he goes on, he says, Bring forth therefore uh, fruits, meat for repentance, and think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you, that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which bringeth forth, uh, bringeth not forth good fruit, is Hoon down and cast into what? I indeed baptize you with water into repentance, but he that come after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost, there's the believer, and with fire, there's the non believer, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garden. That's the kingdom. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire, that is hell. And then cometh Jesus and so forth, right? You understand the timeline there. Now, I want you to jump up here and look at Romans with me. We're going to further the fact that we're not going tribulation. The body of Christ is not part of that. Never was part of that. It's not going to be part of that. I don't say that because that's not what I want. I definitely don't want it, but I say that because the Bible teaches so. Right? So we'll show you a few things here to show you how it's not going to happen. Look at chapter 5 and verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So what does the believer have that's been justified? Peace, peace with God. Alright? So we have peace with God. All right, look at Romans chapter 6 and verse 23. For the wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. All right, so if when you are justified by faith, you receive eternal life, Right? What else did you get? Peace. Eternal what? Peace. There's no way God's ever going to look at a justified believer in the dispensation of grace of God as a vessel of wrath. Why? Because we've received eternal life and we've received eternal peace. Right? Now, you may shake in your peace from time to time, but God's not shaking in here. And God does not see you as an instrument of wrath. You know why? Because your life is hid with Christ in God. So God is not going to pour wrath upon His Son again. He did that at the cross. You have eternal life because of what Christ accomplished on the cross. When you believe what Christ did on the cross, you're justified completely. <coughs> you receive His righteousness and you can never be deemed as a vessel of tribulation, a vessel of God's wrath. Amen. Amen. That's just Bible. Look over in 
Romans chapter 5 again. Romans chapter 5. And we'll start at verse 6. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Right? So the justified believer is saved from wrath. Those who Christ died for their sins, paid for their sins on the cross, they reject that. They don't receive that by faith. They come over here. They'll end up in this time of God's wrath. Right? And trust me, this and that are totally different. Amen. God at being at peace with the world, not imputing their trespasses, is something completely opposite in God pouring out wrath upon people. And, you know, look, we think about a tornado. You know, people, bless their hearts in Texas, what they've gone through. You haven't seen anything like it. The Lord Himself tells you that. You've not seen anything like it. Alright? So, saved from wrath. If you would, let's go to 1 Thessalonians. We won't keep it much longer. 1 Thessalonians. First Thessalonians. You get there. Drop in a chapter in your life. Alright. Look at verse 5. For our gospel came not unto you in word only but also in power and in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance, as you know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. And you became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost, so that you were in samples to all that believed in Macedonia and Achaia. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to Godward is spread abroad, so we need not speak anything. For they themselves show of us what manner of entering and we have unto you, and how you turn to God from idols to serve the living God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. See that? Something has already been done. He has already delivered you from the wrath to come. Right? According to the verse. Paul said in Galatians that he gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world. Well, I know by Scripture in Ephesians 2 that he's delivered me already from the wrath to come because spiritually speaking, he has seated me together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus and there's no wrath in Christ Jesus for me to suffer. And Christ has already suffered the wrath of God. The righteousness of God has revealed his cross work. Look at Colossians and chapter 1. Colossians and chapter 1. Look at verse 13. Who have delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of His dear Son. See that? Already we are in the kingdom of God, meaning the heavenly realm of God in Christ Jesus, seated together with Him in heavenly places. Right? All we lack is the redemption of this body. Right? And we're going to get the redemption of the body when our Lord and Savior, who is our life, appears, then we're going to appear with Him in glory. See that? Mm -hmm. That's where we're going to appear with the Lord in glory when He catches us up to Himself. Are you good with that? Yeah. Boy, I'm telling you, I am extremely thankful. So what you got to see 
is past tense, he's already delivered us from the wrath to come. Future speak in Galatians, he's going to deliver us from this present evil world. Right? Alright, so now go to 1 Thessalonians in chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians in chapter 5. And these are verses that you need to read, but slow down and read and take time to see all the words. Now look in chapter 5, 1 Thessalonians, and verse 1. But at the times and seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. Let me ask you a question. If we were going to go through the time of Jacob's trouble, yeah. it would be nice to have some word, wouldn't it? Yeah. Paul write to us to tell us how to prepare as being the body of Christ. Yeah. You know why Paul has no need to write to the body of Christ Amen. about the time of Jacob's trouble? Because yeah. we're not going through the time of Jacob's trouble. Yeah. Underline the term Jacob's trouble. Israel's trouble. Right? And we're not Israel. We're not Jacob. We are a new creature in Christ Jesus. We're the one new man with the mystery body of Christ going to go out of here in the mystery rapture when he calls us out. Amen. 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 For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Watch, for when they, they shall say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them. And travail upon a woman. As travail, well, right there's Jeremiah, right there's Isaiah, Isaiah again, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Paul quotes, with child, and they shall not escape. Now watch verse 4. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are children of what? Light. Just read it in, in Colossians 1.13. He has delivered us from the power of darkness, right? Translated us into the kingdom of His dear Son and the children of the day. You're not of the night nor of darkness. Those days and nights and light that Paul's talking about are time periods. There's a day in here, there's a night in here, and then there's a day over here. Go over and look at 2 Corinthians in chapter 6. 2 Corinthians in chapter 6. You no, know, people read those verses like just turn the lights on, we got light. Turn the lights off, we got dark. No, we're talking about a time right now, which is known as the day, and it's not as night. Alright? So 2 Corinthians in chapter 6. Look at verse 1. We then as workers together with him. Beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. For he said, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and a day of salvation have I circled thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Right now is the day. The time of the dispensation of the grace of God is the time when you can be saved by grace through faith in Christ alone, by the gospel alone, in nothing else. My friend, it, over here in this time of darkness, it's not about time of getting Gentiles saved by the grace of God through faith in Christ alone. This is about a time right here of God purging the earth of his enemies and pouring out his wrath upon the earth. This is a time of Jacob's trouble. Death not where you want to be. Right now, take what God has given freely, which is his justification unto eternal life. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. Right? Yes. All right? Are you good with that? Amen. Well, the Lord is. That's why he wrote it. All right, back to 1 Thessalonians. I'm closing up this morning. First Thessalonians. So, here we don't educate people to do wrong. But some say those who are doing good at the rapture are going to go up, and those who are doing bad are they're, they're not going. Well, here's the ones that are going are the ones who are justified who have been placed in the body of Christ. So watch the wording here. 
Back in verse 5. You are children of the light, the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others. But let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken are drunken in the night. Now watch verse 8. But let us, who are of the day, be sober. Putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, what? The hope of salvation. What is that hope of salvation? Look at Titus. Titus in chapter 2. Titus chapter 2. Look at verse 13. Looking for that blessed hope, see it? Mm -hmm. And the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So there's your hope. Yeah. That's the helmet of salvation. That is the hope. Is Christ coming in the clouds, call us up to himself. First Thessalonians in chapter 4 said there's some who have no hope. Well, who are they? They're the ones who haven't believed the gospel. Right. They haven't believed Paul's gospel. So go back. Verse 8, 1 Thessalonians 5. Put it on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. Now watch verse 9. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us. Now watch this. That whether we awake or sleep, we should live together for Him. So there's going to be some looking for the blessed hope, they're looking for Jesus Christ's return. There's going to be something, some who are not. But if they're in Christ, whether they be awake or whether they be asleep, they're going to go live with Him, right? Amen. So they may not be spiritually in tune. They may not be up to date with their Bible study. Yeah. Their, their standing is sure. Their state might be out of whack. Mm -hmm. They may be asleep at the wheel, right? And many so-called Christians are. They're going to churches. They're not getting good doctrine. They're asleep for sure. But if they're in Christ, they're going to live with Him. Right? right? So read it again. For God has not appointed us to wrath. Do you believe that verse? Yes, yes. I do because He's already told me I'm saved from it. That's right. But to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with Him. Now, here's the key verse. What's right. this? Wherefore, yep. comfort. comfort. Yes. There's no comfort in the tribulation. No. Right? There's no comfort in that. He said, Wherefore, comfort yourself together and edify one another, even as you also do. In closing this morning, back to Matthew in chapter 24, and we're going to finish off with some red letters, because that's the only way some people can read the Bible. I've got to have red letters. Or else Jesus is not speaking. Can I tell you everything I just gave you came from the Lord? Yes, right. Every verse I gave you came straight from God. Every word that Paul wrote, inspired by God. It wasn't Paul's writings that he came up with out of his own self. That's right. right? It's the Word of God. Matthew 24, where people want to go and try to find the rapture yeah. so they can put you over here in the time of Jacob's trouble. Let me, let me give you this clear. There's no rapture in Matthew 24. There's no rapture in Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. There's no rapture in the Old Testament. The rapture is a mystery given unto Paul. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment of a twinkling of an eye. Right? right? So understand that. But Jesus is speaking here in Matthew 24 at the Olivet Discourse in verse 14. He says that this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to all the world for a witness to all nations and then shall the end come, right? He said, when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whosoever readeth, let him understand. And we went right over to Daniel and showed you Daniel's connected to the time of Jacob's struggle. The cutting off of the Messiah at 69 weeks Prophecy resumed, and there's one more set of years that had to happen. There are seven years, and one more week of seven years, right? For when you, well, I read that. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down and take anything out of the house. 
Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them uh, with, uh, which are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world, to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should, should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. What was it that Jeremiah 30 said about the elect at that time? They shall be <coughs> saved out of it. Right? We are saved from it. Alright? Right? Now, Go down and look in verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation, there you go, the tribulation of those days, see it? Yes. The tribulation of those days, the time of Jacob's trouble before he comes back to earth. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. We read that back in Isaiah, didn't we? Yeah. Shall not give, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. He said he would shake the heavens, and he would shake the earth, right? And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with great power and glory. And then he's going to send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect, there you go, Matthew 3, 11, 4, right? And from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Get it? So there's two events there, right? The church, the body of Christ, which none of the prophets knew, it's going to go out and meet Jesus in the air, so shall we ever be with the Lord. God resumes that prophetic program. They're going to go through a time of Jacob's trouble, seven years. You're going to have the sufferings. And then after the sufferings, you're going to have the glory that shall fall right over there in that earthly kingdom when he brings in all righteousness, right? You know why? Because then Satan is bound for a thousand years and he's not to deceive the nations until the thousand years is over. Christ himself will set up on the, the throne of, of David, his father David, according to the flesh, and he will rule with a rod from that kingdom in Jerusalem with the twelve tribes of Israel and the twelve apostles ruling with him all righteousness in the earth. Amen. There's the Bible in the timeline, right? When a thousand years is open, over, Satan will be loose for a little season and he'll go out and during a time of a thousand years of nothing but peace upon the earth where there is no war and he will get a bunch of knuckleheads and they'll come up with him to overthrow the city of God. And you know what God does? With his mouth he destroys yeah. it. Then the great white throne judgment will take place and people will be judged eternally damned yeah. and sent into the lake of fire. That's what the Bible says. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You and I, not only have we been delivered from the wrath to come here, but we're also delivered from the wrath known as hell and the lake of fire. Yeah. Right? God will not put his body through this and the body cannot be unsaved once it is saved. So you believe once saved, always saved. You would too if you knew Bible doctrine. If you want to unsave me, you got to go get Jesus out of heaven, take him off the cross, dry up his blood, reverse the operation of God, and no man can do it. What God has done, God has done. And when I put it in the cross, he sealed me there, sealed me there, raised me with him, and he, hey, look, I am healed in Christ in God. Amen. Nothing you can do about it. There's no wrath coming to the body of Christ. Right? Y'all good with that? Yes. Amen. I tell you what, the one old preacher said, you just tweeter and tweeter. <laughs> Let us pray. Father, we're so thankful for this day, another day of your grace, your love, your long suffering, your mercy upon the whole man. I give you praise, I give you honor, I give you glory for the cross work of Christ. The finished cross work. When he cried out from that cross, he said it's finished. Not it will be finished, but it's finished. Everything that a never dying soul could ever need was accomplished at that cross. Let us receive it by your faith and the faith that we have in what you did in and by the person of Jesus Christ. 
We'll give you all the praise, honor, glory. What did it say? Amen. 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 Amen.